Hi folks, um, down my messy workshop again. Uh, I got done with another batch of uh, eight wooden lures that I'd like to display. Um, got them hanging here in my drying rack and uh, I'll give you a close shot of each lure. Uh, some words of explanation to each lure and uh, finally I'm going gonna take them upstairs to give them their test swim in my bathtub. Alright. Okay, let's start out with a jointed plug turned down from a broomstick, quite buoyant wood. Uh, Length is uh, four and a half inches, approximately 115 millimeters. Has a copped face, uh, belly hook hanger, and line tie consists of one uh, uh, wire form epoxied into a bore. The wire form is bent similar to a paper clip with the tag ends bent back opposite. I mean bend back towards the eyes, so the glue bond uh, would be rather undestructible. The joint consists of two interconnected uh, screw eyes, and the rear hook hanger is a wire form about passing this way, like the all, and. Uh, Tag ends are bent backward inside grooves on the back of the lure and closed with epoxy. The lure is uh, painted with acrylic paints and uh, top coated with three layers of epoxy. All lures are sealed with propionate. Okay. Here's some kind of banana lure made of. Uh, Abachi wood. Length is uh, six inches. Has an integrated diving vein. The uh, line tie consists of a wire form leading about this way with the tag ends bent back leading in back inside of the body epoxied into a, a groove passing through and, and at the underside embedded into a groove all epoxied in after curing the epoxy has been worked flush rear hook hanger belly hook hanger are simple screw eyes um, the lure has ballast embedded here left and right because you see the, the body has more volume in front, so uh, without ballast the lure would float up uh, tail down and not get to dive and uh, that's why you need to place ballast in the front, would not be good for the casting performance though and uh, I've made such lures before, I'm quite astonished about that even though they lack uh, an added diving uh, vein of uh, sheet metal or lexan, they dive pretty deep. So, uh, may, this one would surely go down 10 feet. And uh, the action of them is a bit moderate. You will see later in the bathtub. All right. Mm. Here's a... Uh, Wooden wiggle lure, how I call it. Learned this one from the book by Charlie Battelle. This one is a uh, five and a well, five and one quarter inch long. Turned on the left from a uh, red Meranti wood. Screw uh, uh, line tie consists of a two inch musky screw eye. Also the rear line tie. Um, I want this one to be dive to dive as shallow as possible, so it does not have any added weight. Homemade uh, pikey lip, as I call it. Some call it the Z lip of uh, 
but we need an aluminum sheet. Okay. Here's another big lure turn from 40 by 40 red Maranti. This one is uh, six, seven, seven and three quarters. No, uh, I can't deal with this uh, conversion. No, seven and a quarter inches, right. Uh, made after striper bass lures. This one is meant for autumn piking. Also has a diving lip of 1.5 millimeter aluminum sheet, just fixed with a two inch musky screw eye, a one and one, one and a half inch or one and a quarter inch musky screw eyes mix up for the belly hook hanger. Also two inch musky screw eye as the rear hook hanger. Also does not have any added ballast because I wanted to dive as shallow as possible. I'm hoping I can use these lures in autumn in the Hamburg Alster Lake, which is, well, about seven to eight feet deep. So lures shouldn't dive that deep. Here's another small plug of a broomstick handle. This one is a three and a half inches, is it? 75, yeah, three and a half inches. Cup face. Like the jointed one, it also has this wire form shaped like a paper clip and has a twisted wire eye as the rear hook hanger. Also does not have any uh, ballast embedded because I've learned that any added ballast to such plugs with a slant face or integrated diving vein would uh, reduce their wiggling action possibly. Okay. Here's a glider, sinking glider, six inches body length, six inches and a quarter. Turned from a heavier uh, timber broomstick. Uh, has ballast embedded right here and right there. For this purpose, I've led the line tie pointing upward like this. So I would gain enough space underneath the line tie shank to embed the ballast. I've made a similar lure with the ingrated uh, tail fin last year. Sadly I've lost it, but it produced at least one pike for me before I've lost it. Uh, I've uh, trimmed this one in a water bucket and now it's done. I shall see how it performs sinking glider with the tail fin. Okay, the tail fin is to stabilize the gliding action. And here's a lure with uh, three inches body length turned from buoyant abachi wood. It looks like a vintage bait, but actually this bait is uh, my own design. Okay, the lip looks like vintage shape. Uh, but uh, I've designed this lure a couple of years ago. I've made a few with a metal lip and uh, I, I have used them a bit. I didn't have, a, uh, didn't catch on them. I had a big pike falling one. So I just thought now I would do them with a Lexan lip uh, for a more natural look probably. I was thinking a sheet metal lip might spook the fish or because it doesn't look very natural. So I'm gonna give it a try with this transparent lip. Has only one hook and the special thing about it is the extremely deep cupping in the rear. You see my fingertip vanishes inside the cupping. The lure has a embedded uh, wire form. The uh, belly slot is also filled with a piece of lead sheet. And right here and there, it has two lead balls, 8 millimeter diameter embedded into the belly. So this is because the lure must float up in about this position, head down. So this would be, the needle would be the water line. 
so it floats up about like this so the trick is if you jack this lure it would suddenly duck down catching air in the deep cupping and uh, create a popping noise on the surface and a trace of bubbles as it dives down I haven't tried these lures this particular one uh, but I know the one with the metal lip I did years before they do work like this the, these ones do not have any added ballast because the weight of the metal lip uh, is enough to let them float in this desired position so uh, I'm gonna take them upstairs to the bathtub and see whether they would perform perform the way I've designed them for I call these pop and dive I pretty much like lures that have a surface action plus an underwater action like uh, Bass or Reno or Lucky 13 but this design of mine runs a lot deeper than Lucky 13 and Bass or Reno they only go down for one and a half feet and I'm expecting this one to go down five to eight feet so you, you could pop it on the surface but in shallow waters you could also use it to plow the bottom and uh, work them anywhere in between the pop and dive or pop diver here's another one of same dimensions also has this very deep cupping to generate the popping noise and on top and uh, pull a trace of bubble as it digs down so I shall see in the bathtub whether it would really work out. Okay, uh, I'm going to go upstairs now and put them in the water. See ya. Okay people, at the bathtub now, starting out with the jointed plug. Have a lively wiggle. Oh yeah. That's nice. Nice action. Such plugs with integrated diving wings do not wiggle as much as lip baits do anyway. Here's the single one piece plug. Uh oh Yeah, I guess if you jack it too hard it will blow out. Well look at this drunken wiggle. Yeah. If you pull it too hard it's blowing out. But for such plug, you would work it on surface, plus pull it down to dive. Maybe an occasional blowout to cause commotion on the surface might not be the worst thing to attract a pike to strike. Probably I should not have made the angle as pointed. If it would be a less steeper angle it would not tend to blow out okay now the sinking glider yeah nice I hope you can see it uh, sinks level almost yeah lovely action the bathtub is too small to display glide bait action anyway now Perfect. The tail fin of such loops enhances the gliding performance as it uh, counterworks the sideward roll, uh, changing the jerk's energy into a forward movement. That's what this uh, rear fin is for. That's nice. Okay. Now this banana you see floats quite high and level due to the weight that I've put in front 
has a slow wiggle and uh, you see if I jack it too hard it might also blow out um, years ago I would have considered such lure to be a reject but uh, now with gaining more and more experience uh, I've learned that even the most unusual swimming pattern could still coax a strike. Yeah. Oh that's nice. It's rather a pull bait than a wobbler. But it's okay. Now the wooden wiggle lure, you see, floats up quite high as well. At least one third of the body volume is still above the surface. And the wiggle is just nice. Will not dive too deep. I think the uh, goal of design is accomplished. Intend to use it in that uh, previously mentioned Hamburg Alster Lake, which is seven to eight feet deep. This one would probably go down three feet on a faster pace. Oh, very nice. This uh, old-time design of the wooden wiggle lure always works out. You only have to take care of that the lip won't be that much wider than the widest part of body. Yeah, very nice. Now the uh, other big lure, left turn from Eranti. You can see it also floats up high. takes one yard to kick to wiggle has a moderate wiggle you see it hardly wants to dive down so two to three feet maximum and the movements are moderate also I've learned that in autumn or fall season uh, big lures with moderate motions are uh, much better suited for pike than uh, ones with very lively swimming actions simply because their prey does not move much about in cold water as well and they want a good bite a big bite that's why bigger lures with moderate swimming actions are better in my opinion which is of course arguable <laughs> All right, now I'm pretty much excited about the pop and dive lures with the deep tail copping. Would they float up? You see, yeah, they float up nicely. Tight wiggle. Dive down steeply. Will they blow out? No. They hunt maybe. Could have placed the toe eye a bit further down to the tip. So now let's check for the... Yeah, it's hard to, hard to uh, display the popping action. You see, even on impact after the cast, they will make a popping noise. I don't know if you can see it on video. I'll try to capture this thing. That moderate gurgling and popping sound with the air bubbles. 
sounding like freshly poured sparkling wine in the glass. Try to capture it again. Gurgling and sparkling. Yeah, I'll try the other one as well. Um, you could, uh, of course, uh, use a differently shaped lip as well, maybe a wide triangular lip. Yeah, this one also has the perfect swimming condition, uh, swimming position. Well, it seems that after the jerk, they would need some path to travel before starting to wiggle. I don't know why this is. But well, once they kick to wiggle, it's okay. Looks like the bathtub is too small. If you jerk them very hard, they will just glide, not wiggling. So I guess if you jerk them to uh, generate the sound and bubbles, you just pause for a split second and then start to retrieve again. Then they will wiggle. And as said before, they would surely dive down five to seven feet, maybe even more. Yeah, something's wrong with the wiggling action. Maybe it also has to do with the angle of the line and the bathtub. Uh, but surely I'm going to give them a try in the outdoors. I'm pretty much convinced that they would catch a fish because uh, uh, I've learned that such combined action of top water and diving action is uh, often likely to attract pike to strike. Okay, that was the little test for today. Thanks a lot for watching folks. Goodbye.